I have made a hundred dollars from my first bug to win bug bounty and the bug was found without using any tools, no burp, no extension. It was all manual testing and it wasn't that difficult to find or to understand. And this bug was found in a program with over 800 submitted valid bugs and over half a million in paid bounties. And I still was able to find a bug in it because I have done some steps that most bug bounty hunters are not ready to do. And if you guys watched my last video, you guys know how much I love making apps, explaining the whole process from the beginning until the end of how I found the bug. And I have done it again. And here is a small application, as you can see. Over here, we have a small login page. Let's just auto fill the demo credentials and log in. In the normal application, you had like to create an account first and then log in. No, I don't want to save the password. And over here, we see a normal application. As I said in the last video, I always, always start with going into everything, looking into the whole application, testing everything, creating whatever I can create, uh, document everything, like anything you can find and you can click just do it. And over here, you can see an application with a lot of functionalities. And I was able to make it vulnerable to the same bug I have found in the initial application. So let's keep going, settings. So as you can see, we have a lot of things over here, a lot of functionalities, a lot of buttons to click. After clicking everything and doing a lot of things in the application for, uh, I think, a, lot, a little bit over two weeks, I got so many informatives. Everything I had sent them was either an informative or a duplicate. And it crushed me a little bit at the beginning, but I still uh, kept going and still kept testing things. And uh, while looking around the application, I noticed that there is a upgrade plan place where you can buy a subscription. As you can see here, we have basic pro enterprise and we can select the plans and all that. By the way, guys, I have a question for you. So in your opinion, what's the most difficult thing about bug bounty and about finding the first bug, like doing bug bounty in general, uh, make sure to leave your answer in the comment section and maybe you will have someone who has experienced the same thing and found a solution and that would be helpful for you. And while looking into this, the thing that caught my eye was the URL. As you can see over here, we have a parameter called return URL. So before actually trying to look into it, let's uh, do the normal process first. And we can see we select this uh, popular, most popular subscription, the pro subscription. Let's enter some details. Over here, we have already some details entered and let's subscribe. No, I don't want to save it. And over here, we can see that we have been redirected to the welcome page and welcome to the family, blah, blah, blah. We have successfully activated the subscription. And if we go back over here, we can see that the URL also has the welcome word in it. So this means that this URL is the same one as the one we got redirected to earlier. So I told to myself, what would happen if I change it? So let's put in a vern or a link of our own. Nothing happened. And I said, okay, let me try to do the payment. And I paid again. I whooped out my credit card and do, did the whole purchase. And I was surprised that I got redirected and I knew it. I knew that this was a vulnerability and this time they should accept it because it does something that the application is not supposed to do or something that might lead to some really bad things. So because the open redirect was made on the client side, so it was made by the JavaScript running on the application or on the browser, sorry, this means that the return URL might have been uh, vulnerable to an XSS. I think that I didn't know back then. And um, I tested that again, but it was resolved also. So. Uh, that's a little bit sad and I could have found a better vulnerability, a better bug, but a win in a way is a win uh, in my book. So the vulnerability could have looked like this. I will change the XSS or the URL to JavaScript. Dot alert XSS. And then give the link and then over the over here, let's say make the payment again. And as you can see, we have an XSS that get triggered after people who do the purchase. And this could have gave me a medium or a high, depending on the triage and how <laughs> important the he thinks the bug is. And yeah, so this is also a trick that you should keep in mind if the return URL doesn't make or the request doesn't make in the request to the backend. 
you should always test for DOM XSS and test with a JavaScript uh, payload. But if you think about it, it's kind of difficult to reproduce or they, it takes, not reproduce, but it takes a lot of steps. So I need to first make the link, send it to the victim. They need to click the link. And after that, they need to make a purchase, which is something that not everyone will do. Not everyone will click a link and then do a purchase uh, after that. So I was scared that it wasn't going to be accepted and I will be getting an informative. So what did I do? I just went to Discord. I went to my local community, a server Discord for Moroccans. If you can speak Moroccan, I have put a link for the server in the description. Go check it. So I asked them over there, what would you guys do in my place? Like, if you find this vulnerability, what would the next steps be? Or what would, how would you, you like show severity? So a really smart guy said that uh, why not redirect people to a error page, a failure page where it says that your payment was not accepted. You have to do it again and then redirect them to your own page where if they make the payment, you will be the one or the attacker will be the one who gets the payment. And this shows a lot of uh, severity in the bug. So I reported it and it got accepted, but as a duplicate at first. So I was a little bit sad. But in the duplicate, I looked at the link and the links uh, showed a different vulnerability and not at the same. Uh, it wasn't the same endpoint, but in a, same, in a different uh, parameter. So I was like, OK, this is not the vulnerability that I have shown them. So I texted the treasure and said, OK, this is not the same vulnerability. Can you please check again? And he said, because both of them are in the same endpoint, it might be that the whole endpoint is not secure enough and this is not going to be accepted. And we had a lot of, a little bit of a discussion, not a discussion, but a conversation. He was a really nice guy and he gave me the time. So a really nice treasure. And after having a small discussion, he said, okay, you know what we can do after the vulnerability gets disclosed or after the vulnerability gets resolved, test it again. And if it's uh, still there, I will, like I will accept it. So after that, I waited for a couple of, I, think, I can't remember, like I think a week or two weeks until the vulnerability got resolved. I tested again and I got, like I found that the vulnerability was over, it's still there. I texted the triager and he finally accepted it. At this point, I have already made the purchase three times. So I had paid three times the subscription, the first time where I've tested it at, at first, Second time where I made the first POC, the video that I sent them showing the vulnerability and the third time to retest the vulnerability. So this is something I think is, that is really important that a lot of people are missing is that sometimes you need to do things that other people are not willing to do. So I was willing to whip out my credit card and do the payment the first, second and third time. And maybe I have lost more money than the money that I've made but at the end, it was a vulnerability and I was really happy. And at the moment that I have received the email, I, I was really happy. I was smiling the whole time and I have even made a video, as you can see. And as you can see in the video, I was really happy. And at the time, the most important thing that happened was that I was like, I felt it. I felt the, those insecurities, those uh, uh, imposter syndrome, like going out of my body. Like I felt it going out and I was thinking, okay, I was paid for a bug that I found. This is not as hard as I thought it was. And I, this is not as imposed, uh, impossible as I thought it was. And that gave me so much motivation that I was able to keep going, keep pushing. And I think the first bug is the most important bug in anyone's career. And it helps a lot to understand that it's not impossible. I hope you guys liked the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Make sure to subscribe because I will be putting out more videos like this. I have already started conversations with some extremely good uh, bug bounty hunters and they have provided some really, really extremely good bugs that I will be showing in the future, make labs out of and show you how these people who have been doing bug bounty for super long 
uh, found these bugs and some of them were in the four digits, some of them more. And one last thing is that I would like to shout out this guy over here. Uh, he is one of the best bug bounty hunting channels for beginners. He explains everything he has done and I have learned a lot of things from him. I've, even the idea of creating labs was from him. So I would like to shout out uh, his channel. And if you guys are beginners, go to his channel and watch all of these videos because he is actually dropping gold every time. And if you guys want to see more content, I have made more labs. This is a video of how I found a critical. I hope you guys enjoyed this and assalamu alaikum.